Every once in a while I feel the urge to do a project. One particular project that I wanted to do was refurbish or upgrade an old PC. Lucky for me my sibling had an old Dell XPS 8100 that he hasn't used for over a year. So I picked it up and made this Dell my new project. Now this isn't really a retro PC. In fact this thing was built in 2011 and has some adequate parts. Granted it's not top of the line of course, being 10 years old. But I could play some Rocket League on low to medium settings. From what I've gathered on the interwebs, this thing was mainly used for business purposes like 3D modeling and designing content like video and graphics. It has a lot of multimedia slots, an i7-860 CPU and a GeForce GTS 240 graphics card. It even has SATA ports on this motherboard and a PCI Express slot. And you might have seen it already. My main issue with this thing is that it's extremely filled up with heaps of dust. Now that's a problem. See most people don't understand that computers need maintenance, like a car every so often. This thing is up to its knees in dust. It's ridiculous. It clearly has never been cleaned. So it's up to me to make it shine again. For starters I removed the GeForce graphics card. And wow. It seems that the dust is all over the place in the card as well. Another friend that comes in handy are these anti-dust cloths. These make dust stick to it instantly, which makes cleaning all of this a breeze. To get to the narrow parts which are unreachable with human hands, I tend to use things like a screwdriver, with the tip heavily wrapped with that cloth. Next is taking out the RAM modules. These are the cleanest of the bunch and stacked up I count 6 gigabytes of memory here. Now my brother told me that the PC was making a lot of noise. This is a common problem with internal fans that have collected a lot of dust over the years. The fans then have a problem with sucking in and letting out airflow, with clogging as a result. This CPU fan is the main culprit of that noise and you can see why. This is what a CPU fan looks like that's been sucking in dust and dirt for over 10 years. After I lifted it up it's also visible that the thermal paste has been completely pulverized and non-existent. This causes a bottleneck in performance while powered on. Cleaning this up is an easy fix with a mix of compressed gas and dust cloths. I first clean the outer layers with the cloth, then separate the fan for a deeper cleansing. With some alcohol it's easy to remove the leftover gunk thermal paste that has been dried up off the CPU fan. The same goes for the CPU as well. Another fan that needs some heavy cleaning is the back fan, which is the easiest one of the bunch when using the cloth. The air vent needed it as well and I can't stress enough how handy these cloths are. They can even reach harder places, like the surface and its internal of the power brick. The case itself is chock full of dust. I even found a spare back clip wandering around in here. I later on seated the pins back for a tight fit. Time to screw back the backplate fan. The IO backplate inserts have dust on the inside, so the compressed air is the way to go with the cloth doing some after cleaning. I was curious about that CPU, so I lifted the clamp, cleaned up the surroundings and removed the CPU to take a closer look. Yep, it's an i7-860. I placed it back and here we go, some fresh thermal paste. I began placing the CPU fan back into its sockets, but it wouldn't connect. I tightened the bolts, but that didn't work. Somehow when pulling loose the CPU fan in the beginning I broke off the pins at the end springs. At least the thermal paste has spread fine. And here's where the project started kicking in. So I ordered a new CPU fan from Amazon. This one already had thermal paste on the bottom so I didn't have to apply new paste and get the thermal paste fanatics leaving comments underneath this video. This new fan fitted in nicely and was secure tight. I then placed back the power cable for the fan. This is a 120 gig one and it's one from the competition, HP. I think that's funny, you know, placing an HP drive into a Dell PC, huh? Another thing was that I needed to order new SATA cables, as I was going to install two extra drives, so I ordered two of those. It's apparent that this PC does have an age problem. See, when this PC was released, 2.5 inch drives weren't common in desktops. Dell went with a complete 3.5 inch drive approach. There wasn't a normal way to install 2.5 drives in here, as they would just float around in the case, not being screwed to the case. 
So I ordered a 2.5 inch converter bay that can take up 2.5 inch drives and transform it into a 3.5 inch case. Next up was putting all the cables back where they belong. Now this didn't went as smoothly as it should be. For starters, this case isn't the case you can work with ease on. On the exterior this case might look big, but it's fairly cramped when it comes to the interior. There's not much room to work with, and Dell did not care about cable management. It's also a downside that the power brick isn't modular, which is a common thing nowadays but not back in 2011. Another problem showed itself. The SATA cable for the optical drive was too short, as it is daisy chained with the rest of the SATA connections that run to the other hard drives. A common problem for the power brick not being modular, meaning I had to remove the optical drive and place the one drive bay down, closer to the hard drives to get those SATA cables together. I went on to removing the glossy front panel. While I had that removed, I cleaned up the rest of the front of the case, because that was filled with dust as well. I removed the optical drive and the placeholder. While I was there, I did some extra cleaning. Somehow, I wrongly adjusted the slide down mechanism from the front panel for the disc station. Not a big problem, as it was an easy fix. This metal rod just needed to be placed back in the right position to make it align correctly. While getting the front panel back in there, I forgot to push back the optical drive so that the front panel could click in. I was unnecessarily pushing it back with friction, because just pushing the optical drive back did the trick. I also cleaned up the power brick as much as I could. The problem is that the power brick is a pain to remove. It requires the case to be fully dismantled, which I wasn't prepared to do. So I went on to using compressed gas as well as the cloth to clean it up the best I could. And just for the fun of it, I installed a PCI Sound Blaster Audio 2 because why not? I screwed down that I.O. plate that I found in the case. And I could finally line up the cables correctly and even do some cable managing of my own for whatever that's worth in this cramped space. The real question is, will this PC make a bigger step into 2021 and deliver some performance? Time to find that out. Now the first run didn't go as smooth as I hoped. The first problem was that I couldn't get it to power on. So I took off the complete front cover, which was the smarter thing to do when swapping an optical drive into another bay. Turns out I just had to push the power button down a bit harder. It booted up and then this occurred. Now my experience is that the two beeps mean that the RAM modules aren't fitted correctly in the slots. So I proceeded to take them out and refit them. Second run it is. It took its sweet time. Everything looked fine, but then... Okay, let's try something else. The CMOS battery might have died over the years being unattended. So I went on to replace it with a brand new one. Third attempt. Yeah, great stuff. I tried my luck again with the RAM modules. I figured maybe one of those might be broken. So I tested each module one by one, but with no luck at all. So you know what? I ordered a new RAM module, because why not? I placed a new one in and yeah. F I went on to replace the CMOS battery again with some other fresh ones laying around. And it gave me the same two beeps right from the start. I was done. Clearly another problem was piling up. And after reading message boards on the internet, the other common problem being was that the motherboard might be defective. Now for a second I had the idea of ordering a new motherboard with DDR4 capability and a DDR4 RAM module. But why would I do that? It's not cost efficient. And I'd rather spend that money just buying a new desktop case, including new peripherals to get where I need to be. Seeing that this desktop isn't mine and I would have to give the case back to my brother, I didn't see the need to invest any more time, money and effort into this machine. Clearly, this was not a RAM module or CMOS battery problem, but a motherboard one. Finding a replacement motherboard for it is not a task I am willing to take. So my journey for refurbishing this PC ends here. I want to thank you for watching this video and going on a journey with me. If you like this video, go give it a thumbs up and even better. Subscribe to be the first one to know when the next refurbishing journey will occur. And I'll see you on a next video.